If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer this question first on your own before listening on. In order to find the speed of the car at the bottom of the driveway, we can use the work energy theorem. So let's take a look at that. Now in this equation on the left hand side, we have the work done by non-conservative forces. And the most common non-conservative force in general physics problems would be the force of friction. So really we can think of this term on the left hand side as the work done by the force of friction. And we know from this chapter that the work done by the force of friction would be the force of friction multiplied by the distance that the car travels, which we have labeled S in the diagram, multiplied by the cosine of an angle. And we want to talk about what that angle is. And to do that, we can come over to the diagram. We notice that the car is moving down the ramp, and so its displacement would be pointing in this direction. We also notice that the frictional force is pointing up the ramp in the opposite direction. And so we have the displacement pointing in this manner, and then the frictional force pointing in the opposite direction. Notice that the angle between those two vectors would be 180 degrees. That's the angle that we're going to be plugging in, since that angle would be between the displacement and the force that you are calculating the work for. So we'll go ahead and fill in 180. Over to the right hand side of the equation, we have the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. Now we notice that the question mentions that the car starts from rest. And so whenever an object starts from rest, that means its initial kinetic energy is going to be zero. So we can remove that from the equation. The final kinetic energy would be one half times the mass of the car times that final speed squared. And it's indeed that final speed V right here that we're looking for. Now for the potential energies, we notice that the car at the end of its motion ends up at ground level, and that means its gravitational potential energy at the final position will be zero. Any object that is at the surface will have zero gravitational potential energy. And then we have to subtract the initial potential energy. Now that's going to be the mass of the car times g times the initial height. And what we're going to do is actually come up with an expression for that initial height. And to do that, we want to consider that we have a right triangle, which we can sort of outline in red right here. And we know it's a right triangle because presumably this angle is 90 degrees. Now, looking at the angle of 20 degrees, we could say that the sine of that 20 degree angle is equal to the side that is opposite of that angle, which would be that y initial divided by the hypotenuse of this right triangle, which we have marked as s. We could solve this equation for yi by multiplying both sides by s so that it cancels on the right hand side. And when we do that, we see that the initial height is equal to s times the sine of 20. So we're going to come over here and we're going to replace the initial height with s times the sine of 20 degrees. Now, we will next rearrange the equation so we can isolate V. And to do that first, we can add the mg times s times sine of 20 to both sides of this equation. And that way, it's going to cancel out on the right-hand side. We could then multiply both sides of this equation by 2. And when we do that on the right-hand side, this 1 half multiplied by the 2 will cancel, leaving us leaving us with just mv squared. We could then divide both sides of the equation by the mass m so that it cancels out on the right. And then finally we can take the square root of both sides so that the right hand side becomes just v. And then at this point we can simply plug in all of the known values for the kinetic frictional force. We were told that that is equal to 4 times 10 to the 3 and that's in newtons. We'll omit the units just for clarity. S was the length of the ramp, and that was 5. We're going to have the cosine of 180 plus the mass of the car, which is 2.1 times 10 to the third, multiplied by g, which is 9.8, and then S once again is 5, the sine of 20, and then we'll divide by the mass of the car. So obviously you want to plug this into your calculator very carefully. And make sure that when you write the numerator 
of this expression that's underneath the radical that the 2 lies on the outside of a set of brackets. Basically, the 2 has to multiply by everything inside those brackets. So just be a little bit careful about how you plug this in. When you do it correctly, you should get a speed of about 3.8, and the standard unit of speed will be meters per second. So this is the correct answer to the question.